ENGIE is a French multinational electric utility company, headquartered in La Défense, Courbevoie, which operates in the fields of energy transition, electricity generation and distribution, natural gas, nuclear, renewable energy and petroleum. It is one of the few players in the sector to develop expert skills in both upstream engineering, purchasing, operation, maintenance and downstream waste management, dismantling activities. The company, formed on the 22nd of July 2008 by the merger of Gaz de France and Suez, traces its origins to the Universal Suez Canal Company founded in 1858 to construct the Suez Canal. As of 2018, ENGIE employs 158,505 people worldwide with revenues of 60.6 .6 billion euros. ENGIE is listed on the Euronext exchanges in Paris and Brussels and is a constituent of the CAC 40 and BEL 20 indices. ENGIE is headed by Isabel Kosha, who has strongly transformed the company since 2016, notably by deciding to exit coal activities and by investing massively in renewable energies and energy transition services. History Topic. Background Before 2006. Prior to the GDF Suez merger plans in 2006, the company existed as two separate French multinational corporations, Suez SA and Gaz de France. Suez was, and still remains, through GDF Suez one of the oldest continuously existing multinational corporations in the world as the result of nearly two centuries of reorganization and corporate mergers. One line of corporate history dates back to the 1822 founded Algemeen Nederlandsche Machapij ter Begunstiging van de Volksvlage, literally, General Dutch Company for the Favouring of Industry by King William I of the Netherlands see Society Générale de Belgium. The origin of its name Suez traces back to its other founding entity, the Compagnie Universale du Canal Maritime de Suez founded in 1858 to build the Suez Canal. Suez SA was the result of a 1997 merger between the Compagnie de Suez and Lyonnaise des Eaux. Gaz de France was created in 1946 along with its sister company Electricité de France EDF by the French government. After the liberalization of Europe's energy markets, Gaz de France also entered into the electricity sector, having developed combined natural gas electricity offerings. The company's capital was partially floated on the Paris Stock Exchange in July 2005, raising €2.5 billion Euros for the French government. Evolution of GDF Suez On 25 February 2006, French Prime Minister Dominique de Villepin announced the merger of water supply and treatment, waste management and energy company Suez and power firm Gaz de France, with the aim of creating the world's largest liquefied natural gas company. Since the French state owned over 80% of Gaz de France, it was necessary to pass a new law in order to make the merger possible. Whilst Nicolas Sarkozy was for several months opposed to the Villepin government's plans for a merger of the two companies, preferring a three-way deal with Italy's Enel which would maintain a controlling stake for the state, he subsequently accepted the government proposal. The plan for a merger between Gaz de France and Suez came under fire from the whole of the political left, which feared the loss of one of the last ways of preventing the price rises experienced over the previous three years, and by the social Gaullists and trade unions. In August 2006, the left-wing opposition submitted a record-breaking 137,449 amendments to the proposed legislation. Under normal procedure, Parliament would have been required to vote on the amendments, which would have taken 10 years. The French constitution does give the government options to bypass such a filibuster, but in the end these were not used. Law No 2006 1537 of the 7th of December 2006 on the energy sector authorized the privatization of Gaz de France. On the 3rd of September 2007, Gaz de France and Suez announced agreed terms of merger on the basis of an exchange of 21 Gaz de France shares for 22 Suez shares via the absorption of Suez by Gaz de France. 
Various holdings of Gaz de France and Suez had to be divested in order to satisfy the concerns of the European Commissioner for Competition. GDF agreed to sell its approximate 25% stake in Belgian electricity producer SPE for €515 million. Euros. The stake was purchased by fellow SPE shareholder Centrica, which exercised its right of first refusal, blocking a previous agreement to sell the stake to Electricité de France. Suez, meanwhile, was forced to reduce its shareholding in natural gas distributor Fluxis and sell its Belgian gas supply subsidiary Distragas to ENI. Topic: <laughs> GDF Suez 2008 to 2015. The newly created GDF Suez came into existence on the 22nd of July 2008, the world's second largest utility with over 74 billion euros in annual revenues. The deal resulted in the conversion of the French state's 80% stake in GDF into just over 35% of shares of the new company. The water and waste assets which formerly formed part of Suez were spun off into a new publicly traded company, Suez Environment, in which GDF Suez retains a stake. In 1975, Ruhrgas and Gaz de France concluded a deal according to which they agreed not to sell gas in each other's home market. The deal was abandoned in 2005. In July 2009, the European Commission fined GDF Suez and E on €553 million Euros both over arrangements on the MEGAL pipeline. It was the second biggest fines imposed by the European Commission and the first one on the energy sector. In October 2009, GDF Suez placed sixth in an AT. Kearney, Businessweek ranking of the world's best companies. The highest placed European firm. On 10 August 2010, the company announced a merger of its GDF Suez Energy International Business Unit, along with its operations within the United Kingdom and Turkey, with international power. The acquisition created the world's biggest independent power producer, and the enlarged company will retain International Powers listing on the London Stock Exchange and be 70% owned by GDF Suez. In December 2010, GDF Suez became the key founding member of the Medgrid company, a consortium of 20 plus utilities, grid operators, equipment makers, financing institutions, and investors, which will implement the Medgrid project, a French renewable energy initiative within the framework of the Union for the Mediterranean. Mediterranean UFM. The project, planned in North Africa, aims to promote and develop a Euro-Mediterranean electricity network of 20 GW installed generating capacity, with 5 GW being devoted for exports to Europe. The Medgrid together with the German-initiated Desertec project would serve as the backbone of the European supergrid. On the 16th of April 2012, the purchase of the remaining 30% of international power was announced by GDF Suez and the transaction completed in July 2012. GDF Suez was advised by Rothschild and Ondra Partners, while Barclays, Morgan Stanley and Nomura advised International Power. On 9 August 2013, GDF Suez, through its energy services business line, announced the purchase of Balfour Beatty's UK facilities management business, Balfour Beatty Workplace. The legacy Kofley business incorporated the legacy Balfour Beatty workplace business which went on to acquire Lend Lease FM in 2014 from Lend Lease Group giving the new business a substantial platform in the operation of PFI assets in the UK. <laughs> GDF Sewers becomes ENGIE, 2015–present On April 24, 2015, GDF Sewers announced it has changed its name to ENGIE in an effort to further expand the company's international footprint. CEO and Chairman Gerard Mestrelet said the new name was a symbol to meet the challenges of the energy transition and accelerate the group's development. In July 2015, ENGIE acquired 95% of Solair Direct, raising its photovoltaic production from 125 to 486 megawatts. On 2 March 2017, ENGIE acquired Keepmoat Regeneration for £330 million to form the Places and Communities Division, headed up by Keepmoat Limited's former CEO Dave Sheridan. 
The new division is focused on three key activities energy, services, and regeneration. GDF Suez has been ranked as among the 13th best of 92 oil, gas, and mining companies on indigenous rights and resource extraction in the Arctic. In April 2019, Engie announced the acquisition of 90% of Transportadora Associada de Gas, TAG, Brazil's largest natural gas transmission system owner, 2,800 miles of pipeline, 47% of the country's gas infrastructure, for 7.7 .7 billion euros. It is the largest acquisition since international power in 2010. The operation allows Engi to develop on its strategic axis of energy infrastructure as well as in Brazil, one of the priority countries. Strategy <inaudible> 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 Since 2014, ENGIE has operated a strategic shift, by reducing future exploration in fossil fuels and investing massively in renewable energies solar, wind, geothermal, biomass, hydroelectric, and nuclear and energy efficiency services. In 2015, ENGIE announced its decision to stop new investments in coal plants, and to dispose of €15 billion Euros in assets in order to reinvest into projects that promote low-carbon, distributed energy. ENGIE also announced it will invest €22 billion Euros in renewable energies, energy services such as heating and cooling networks, and decentralized energy technology. In 2016, Isabel Kosher defines the strategy of ENGIE as follows, to promote decarbonized energy oil and coal replaced by renewables and natural gas that emit less greenhouse gases, decentralized energy energy produced and stored as close as possible to its place of consumption, and digitized energy big data and digital tools for energy efficiency and network management. The group plans to invest €1.5 billion Euros on digital and new technologies related to energy. ENGIE is also promoting an open innovation approach with its dedicated entity, ENGIE Fab, that supports in particular development of intelligent networks, smart grids, Internet of Objects, green mobility, energy storage, and hydrogen. In 2019, after having invested €15 billion Euros in new activities, financed by the sale of coal and upstream oil and gas, Isabel Kosher announces the definitive exit of coal activities and a new strategic plan for the years 2019 to 2021. Engi plans to specialize in high value added services and in renewable energies. Engi plans to invest another €12 billion Euros in these activities, partly financed by the sale of €6 billion Euros assets including the last coal plants. Engi also announces its intention to leave 20 of the 70 countries where it is active, and focus its activities on 20 countries and 30 metropolitan areas, mainly in Southeast Asia and Africa. <laughs> Operations. Topic. Key figures 158,505 employees in close to 70 countries 57,750 in electricity and gas 97,200 in services 60.6 billion euros in 2018 revenues 22 billion euros in investments per year over 2016-2018 1,000 researchers and experts at 11 research and development centers. As of May 2015 ranked second in the Forbes 2000 ranking of largest companies among electric utilities. Ranked number one most valuable brand by brand finance among utilities. In October 2009 ranked sixth in an A.T. Kearney, Businessweek study of the world's best companies. Topic. Power generation Topic France Thanks to former Suez subsidiaries such as Compagnie Nationale du Rhône Corner, Electrobel and Société Hydroélectrique du Midi Shem, GDF Suez is the second largest generator of electricity in France behind EDF. The company indicated in December 2011 that three quarters of the group's production comes from sources that emit no CO2 principally hydroelectricity through Corner and Shem and wind power, the latter of which both Gaz de France and Suez moved aggressively into in 2007 and 2008. 
Recently acquired subsidiaries include La Compagnie du Vent majority stake, the wind farm business of NAS and Wind and Aurelia. The company also operates a natural gas-fired combined cycle power plant in Dunkirk. With the stated aim of reaching a total production capacity of 10 GW by 2013, three gas-fired thermal power plants at foss sur mer Montoire de Bretagne and Saint-Brieuc are currently in various stages of development, as is a solar panel project in Kerbins. Topic international ENGIE also generates electricity in a number of countries outside France. Most notably, the company is the leading producer in both Belgium and the Netherlands through Electrobel and the fifth largest generator in Europe overall, as well as the largest non-state-owned generator in both Brazil and Thailand thanks to majority stakes in ENGIE Brazil and Glow Energy respectively. The company also operates in North and Latin America through its Suez Energy International Unit, as well as in other European and Asian countries. The company generates electricity through various types of plants, including thermal power, nuclear power, combined heat and power, wind farms, hydroelectric and biomass. ENGIE is currently developing a $15.8 billion nuclear power plant in Sinop, Turkey in partnership with Itochu and Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. In November 2016, ENGIE signed an agreement with Moroccan energy company Nareva. The two companies are planning to develop energy assets in North and Western Africa that will produce 5,000 and 6,000 megawatts. The plans will take place between 2020 and 2025. In December 2016, ENGIE announced that ASA North One Independent Water and Power Project (IWPP) has started full commercial operations. The power and water plant is Kuwait's most efficient source of electricity. In January 2017, ENGIE has been awarded the contract and achieved financial closing for the Greenfield Fadhili Independent Power Project (IPP) in Saudi Arabia, the most efficient cogeneration plant in the country. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Coal-fired power plants. In October 2015, ENGIE announced that it will no longer build coal-fired power plants. Gerard Mestrelet said projects for which ENGIE had already entered into firm commitments would be honored, but projects where contracts had not yet been signed will de facto be suspended. As a result, ENGIE abandoned two coal-fired power plants projects in Adiyumurtalik Turkey, and in Thabometsi South Africa. In February 2016, ENGIE announced the selling of its stakes in the Payton Power Plant located in Indonesia and in the Meenakshi Power Plant located in India. ENGIE also announced the closing of the Rugeley Power Station in England. In May 2016, ENGIE CEO Isabel Kosher told a French Senate committee that it was planning a gradual withdrawal from coal fired generation over the coming years. This could include closure of, or sale of its stake in, the lignite fired Hazelwood Power Station in Victoria, Australia. ENGIE sold to ANIA its Polonyek Power Plant, in Poland. ENGIE announced it will close its Hazelwood Power Plant at the end of March 2017. In February 2019, ENGIE announced the definitive exit of all coal activities. Renewable energy ENGIE's renewable installed capacity represented 19.5% of its energy mix at the end of 2016. The group's renewable energy mix is composed of hydropower, solar energy, onshore and offshore wind power, biomass, and geothermal sources. ENGIE has won bids for several solar and wind projects since 2016, a 338 MW solar project in India April 2017, 209 MW in contracts for solar and wind projects in Mexico, and a 40 MW solar project in Peru. It has begun construction of the 100 MW Cathu Solar Park in South Africa. ENGIE invested in Helitec, a German company pioneering technologies in organic photovoltaics, in September 2016. 
The group also assumed 100% control of La Compagnie du Vent in March 2017, and a 30% stake in Unisun, a Chinese solar photovoltaics company. In April 2017, in Brazil, ENGIE's largest international hydroelectric project, and the fourth largest power plant in the country, 3,750 MW, was inaugurated in December 2016. ENGIE built its first international geothermal power generation plant in Indonesia. In October 2016, ENGIE developed France's first marine geothermal power station in Marseille. In May 2017, Mexico's Ministry of Energy awarded ENGIE three geothermal exploration permits. In February 2019, ENGIE announces it plans to add 9 gigawatts GW of renewable energy generation capacity to its portfolio by 2021, as part of its plan to accelerate the investments in renewable and low-carbon energies. In May 2019, ENGIE and Portuguese power company EDP announced the future creation of a 50-50 joint venture in offshore wind, starting with a total of 1.5 GW under construction and 4 GW under development. Topic natural gas In its historic activity of gas, ENGIE covers the whole gas chain, from exploration and production to distribution. It is the, second largest gas transportation network in Europe Largest gas distribution network in Europe Fifth largest LNG portfolio in the world Largest LNG importer in Europe Second largest LNG terminal operator in Europe In November 2016, ENGIE and Statoil have reached an agreement on the renegotiation of their long-term gas supply contracts to adapt them to the evolution of European natural gas markets and to better reflect current market rates. In 2016, ENGIE has negotiated new contracts for gas supply around the world, an agreement with Uktransgaz, Ukrainian transmission system operator, on gas transmission and storage, an agreement with AES Andres to foster growth in LNG and natural gas sales in the Caribbean. ENGIE also committed the Neptune, one of the two FSIU floating storage and regasification unit of its fleet, to deliver LNG to the first floating LNG import terminal in Turkey, in China. After an LNG supply agreement with Beijing Gas, ENGIE is looking at opportunities in the underground gas storage needed to hold stocks to meet seasonal demand. The bunkering vessel ENGIE Zeebrugge performed for the first time in the port of Zeebrugge, Belgium, in June 2017. It was the first to provide ship-to-ship -ship supplies for LNG as a fuel. In March 2017, ENGIE sold its licenses for shale gas exploration in the UK to petrochemicals firm Ineos. As part of its decarbonised strategy in May 2017, ENGIE enters into exclusive negotiations with Neptune Energy for the sale of its 70% interest in Exploration and Production International (EPI). ENGIE signed in 2016 a technical and commercial cooperation contract with Göteborg Energy to push further the industrialization of the dry biomass to gas production approach. Engi is also involved in the Ambigo project, the first dry biomass to gas project which will be located in Alkmaar, Netherlands. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Energy Services. ENGIE provides energy efficiency and environmental services. 90,000 of the group's employees are dedicated to these services. Engineering, consulting, feasibility studies, engineering, project management and client support Systems, installations and maintenance, electrical installations, industrial maintenance, air conditioning and refrigeration, and systems integration Energetic services, energy efficiency, multi-technology maintenance management, cogeneration and facilities management Housing services, cost-effective energy, energy performance improvements, renewable energy and thermal renovation Smart city Urban heating and cooling community systems, development of high-end technology, a streamlined energy mix, carbon footprint reduction of buildings Microgrids and decentralized energy, local energy production and consumption systems, energy supply in isolated areas, residential self-consumption or in industrial and commercial sectors, eco-district 
green mobility, alternative fuels NGV, biome, hydrogen, etc., charging stations for electric vehicles, transport infrastructures, smart transit systems and upstream design and planning in March 2017, ENGIE acquired the Dutch Evbox, one of the suppliers in electric vehicle charging. ENGIE 50% and Axiom Infrastructure US 50% won a 50-year concession to ensure the sustainable energy management of the Ohio State University in Columbus, one of the largest university campuses in the United States with 485 buildings. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Shareholder structure As of the 31st of December 2018, State of France 23.64%, BlackRock 5.02%, Group Caisse des Dépôts 1.83%, CNP Assurances 0.99%, Employees of the company 3.97%, Free Float 63.57%, Treasury Stock 0. 98% Topic Organization Topic Business Units In April 2019, as part of its strategic project to develop zero carbon transition as a service, Engie announced the organization of its businesses around four business lines: thermal, infrastructures, customer solutions, and renewables. Engi also announces the creation of Engi Impact, a business entity in charge of strategy for the largest clients. Engi is also organized in geographic and transverse business units. Eleven are geographic Africa, Latin America, Northern America, Asia Pacific, Benelux, Brazil, China, Northern, Southern, and Eastern Europe, Generation Europe, Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Poland, Portugal, Spain, United Kingdom, Middle East, Southern, Central Asia, and Turkey. United Kingdom. Eight are set up in France, France BTOB, France BTOC, France Renewable Energy, France Networks, Natural Gas Transport GRTGAZ, Natural Gas Distribution GRDF, Liquefied Natural Gas LNG, Terminals LNG, Natural Gas Storage G, Five are Global, Exploration and Production International, Global LNG Liquefied Natural Gas, Global Energy Management, Tractable Engineering, GTT Gas Transport and Technigas. Topic subsidiaries and holdings Alta Service ENGIE ENGIE Axima ENGIE Kofli ENGIE Inao ENGIE Insight formerly Ecova ENGIE Electrobel ENGIE Endel ENGIE Fabricom ENGIE Global Markets ENGIE Home Services ENGIE IT Information and Technologies ENGIE Lab ENGIE MTOM ENGIE Rousseau Solaire Direct Tractable ENGIE Topic ENGIE main subsidiaries. Topic GRDF. GRDF is the distribution subsidiary of Gas, major gas distributor in France and Europe. GRDF builds, operates, and maintains the distribution network. It transports natural gas to customers. It has around 12,000 employees and the actual CEO 2017 is Senior Executive Edouard Sauvage. <laughs> ENGIE Kofli ENGIE Kofli is the subsidiary of Energy Efficiency and Environmental Services. It employs 12,000 collaborators and generates a turnover of €2, Euros, 5 billion. The CEO is Jean-Pierre Monaga. Topic ENGIE IT ENGIE IT or ENGIE Information and Technologies is the IT subsidiary of Engie Group, founded in 2012 by CEO Jean-Michel Carboni 2012 Originally Engie IT departments were managed by the DSI 1 Euro, 35 BN of revenue in 2012, Carboni pulled IT departments to create one subsidiary named ENGIE IT Information and Technologies. In 2013 the turnover is around 600 million of EUR. 
Topic governance The ENGIE General Management, Isabel Kosher, Chief Executive Officer Jean-Pierre Clamadieu, Chairman The members of the Group Executive Committee are, Isabel Kosher Paolo Almirante, Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer. He is also supervising Brazil, NECST North, South and Eastern Europe Business Units, and MESCAT Middle East, South and Central Asia and Turkey Business Units. Olivier Biancarelli, appointed Executive Vice President and CEO of Tractabel. He will be responsible for the customer solutions business line and will also supervise Angie Impact. Anna Busto, Executive Vice President, Brand and Communication. Frank Bruhl, Executive Vice President, Supervising UK, LATAM Latin America and NORAM US, Canada Business Units. Pierre Cherier, Executive Vice President, Supervising GEM Global Energy Management, Generation Europe, B2C France and Benelux Business Units. He will also lead the Thermal Global Business Line. Pierre D. Heinink, Executive Vice President, in charge of Group Human Resources, Transformation, Corporate, Global Business Support, Global Care and Real Estate. Judith Hartman, Executive Vice President, Chief Financial Officer. She is responsible for steering our publicly listed subsidiaries, supervision of GTT and coordination with sewers. She is also in charge of Corporate Social Responsibility CSR. Didier Hollow, Executive Vice President, Supervising Elingi, GRDF, GRTGAZ, G, China, and APAC Asia Pacific business units. He will also lead the Gas and Power Network's global business line. Gwen Ilua, Appointed Executive Vice President, Supervising France Renewables and Hydrogen Business Units. She will also lead the Renewables Global Business Line. Shankar Krishnamurthy, Executive Vice President in charge of Strategy and Innovation, Industrial Development, Research and Technology, and Procurement. He is also supervising the Africa Business Unit. Yves Le Gellard, Executive Vice President, Chief Digital Officer, in charge of Group Information Systems. Wilfred Petrie, Executive Vice President, CEO France B2B and Supervising France Rousseau Business Unit. As of May 17, 2019, ENGIE is administered by a board of directors of 14 members, seven appointed by the shareholders General Assembly Jean Pierre Clamadieu, Isabelle Cocher, Fabrice Bregier, Francoise Malroux, Ross McInnes, Marie Jose Nado, and Lord Ricketts of Shortlands One, representing the French State Two, appointed by the Shareholders Assembly upon proposal of the French. State, Patrice Durand and Marie Noël Jago Lavizia III representing the employees, Christophe Agog, Alain Bullier and Philippe Lepage I representing the employee shareholders, Christophe Orbit. The board is backed by the recommendations of four specialized committees audit, appointments and compensations, ethics, environment and sustainable development, strategy, investment and technology. See also European Distributed Energy Partnership